Today's video is a new format for me in presenting you with information. I wanted to talk to you today about the HLA system, which stands for human leukocyte antigens. It goes directly to the question that was asked by Sandy Nell. What creates susceptibility? Why do some people have these problems and others don't? It also goes to the work of Dr. Marcello Matos because he's been doing some remarkable work in getting information that helps him describe how severe the problem is, who's going to respond to treatment, and to be able to give the patient honest information about the disease form they have and what can actually be done about it. The HLA system, again, which stands for human leukocyte antigens, is a part of our immune system. It is responsible for identifying abnormal processes like inflammation, infectious processes caused by viruses or bacteria, and tagging those damaged tissues or tagging in fact, the cells infected with the pathogens and acting as an escort or chaperone and taking it to another part of our immune system, which is part of your white blood cell system, called either a B or a T cell. It can also take it to another part of your system, which recognizes um, infections called the complement system and that's outside of your bone marrow. But these cells are circulating often in the blood and the lymphoid tissues and they're really a disposal system for us to get rid of, of the toxic substances that are formed when we're confronted by infectious type processes. The HLA system is really a gene map and a lot of these genes, when they have mutations, are associated with an awful lot of diseases, over a hundred different types of diseases. For example, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, autoimmune hepatitis, lupus, celiac disease, psoriasis, asthma, and diseases like ankylosing spondylitis or among some of the ones that are a little bit more famous, if you will, or common. And those antigen-presenting cells, as they're called, as part of the leukocyte antigen system, actually are able to distinguish between self and non-self. You see, those B and T cells can be very toxic. They're toxic not only to pathogens, but of course to us. So it's important for us to be able to have a safeguard or security system in place so that we don't actually make a mistake. And so that chaperone escorts that damaged tissue for whatever reason and presents it to the B and T cell. Here it is, I've got the perpetrator and I'm delivering it in handcuffs to the police. And like a lock and key system, it is able to identify what exactly it is that's doing this to us and we're able to dispose of it at that point. It provides eat me signals, if you will. The beauty of the work that Dr. Matos is doing and it's very important. I admire for him for it. I applaud him for it. Is by getting gene mapping done, he's able to discern where a particular susceptibility might be. Oftentimes we'll test our patients and they come up seronegative by serological testing. That means they don't have a form of arthritis 
that has an associated blood marker or an autoimmune disease that does not have a blood marker but being forearmed with a genetic map it tells us where potentially to look in the future not everybody reaches a tipping point that can be identified at the time that the symptoms manifest themselves so we can go back if a patient has positive or suggestive symptoms and radiographic evidence of having a joint disease and retest them at a future point and then if they've converted it may very well be depending upon the type of disease that they may have or cluster of diseases that they might have be able to provide more effective care it's also important to know when the care that you could possibly give is not going to be effective many patients struggle with temporomandibular joint disease that has a rather destructive index some of them have pain some of them don't but for many people it becomes intolerable and so then they start to seek surgical solutions and of course we know that not every surgery is successful well if you have a gene map and you've done some work like Dr. Maddows has done you're able to tell a patient when the care that they receive might be effective or less effective when the treatment approaches we select which incorporate compromises into the care might be able to push off or slow down the progression to failure before you have a total joint replacement for example or there might be a disease where you'd be able to provide chemotherapy for like in the form of biologics uh, I'm sure you've all heard of Embril or Umera or Rituximab and you're able to actually reverse parts of the joint destructive process well this is important because it may very well be that we can push off those surgeries or avoid those surgeries or other diseases which could be effectively cured like a temporal arteritis or a giant cell arteritis which is known to be involved with temporomandibular joint disorders uh, so when when we take a look at the testing that we do one of the things that we are trying to do as a profession is to determine how we're going to influence joint fate how can we make improvements for our patients on any levels or give them information that prepares them for the journey that they're going to have to take what does this mean for them for the rest of their lives and I think that that's the beauty of what someone like Dr. Matos is doing because he's able to use that HLA typing as a directory for potential diseases that may exist or will occur in the future and and then apply it to the patient and I think that that's so important because when you're struggling when you're searching for hope the most important thing that we can do for you is to be honest with you because the loss of trust between doctor and a patient is sacred to both of us and by giving you truthful information you may not like to hear it but at least it gives us an outlook for the future whatever that may be and it will save you a lot of time and a lot of aggravation from trying to seek solutions which are potluck solutions and don't really have effectiveness for your particular individual form of disease as, as this is a first time for me in providing a format like this I would I would honestly like to know if I've hit my mark and so I'm going to ask you please provide comments for me uh, underneath in the comment section when I post this 
and give me some feedback as as to whether or not you enjoy this particular format and also whether or not um, you would prefer to have actually the articles in the papers that I could provide you with it this in, in addition to what I've already done here on the video so I thank you for your time today and um, it was a good chance for us to meet and um, I thank you for being members of my group um, I really feel like this has become uh, a part of my dream to educate my professionals that um, are on this site as, as well as you as um, member patients and, and give you some direction as to where your problems may be. Uh, often I do that in the form of posts and I, I, I supply you with articles that I hope are effective in giving you some clues as to how you're going to go about addressing um, your particular uh, symptoms. So take care, have a great day, and I'll catch up with you soon.